I have been reading the Bible. I'll tell you what I read about this week. I read about a big stone. A big stone was rolled to the opening of a tomb. Do you remember what a tomb is? It's like a cave. So the stone was to keep the body of Jesus inside the tomb. That's what I was reading about. Jesus had been crucified, nailed to a cross to die. His body had been wrapped in cloths and then they took his body and they laid it in the tomb. And soldiers rolled a big stone in front of the tomb. And the soldiers stayed there and guarded the tomb entrance. They thought they were keeping the disciples from stealing the body of Jesus away. Well, three days later, this is what happened with that stone. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. That great big heavy stone rolled away. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do some rolling? Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. I want you to make your arms be like a great big heavy stone. Not a little stone, a great big heavy stone. Stone. Now say this with me. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. That great big heavy stone rolled away. How big? Great big. Was it heavy? Yes. How heavy? Big heavy. How did that happen? Hmm. Why did that happen? What happened after that? What did everybody do about that? It was a sad and a hard thing that Jesus was nailed to a cross to die. But it was also the most wonderful thing that Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. God planned for that to happen so he could save us, save us from sin, save us from the punishment of death, save us so we can live with Jesus forever. Three days after the body of Jesus was laid in the tomb, Jesus left that tomb to remain alive forever. God had rolled the stone, do a little roll, rolled the stone away so that people could see that the body of Jesus was not there, that Jesus was not dead. And the soldiers were guarding the tomb. The stone rolled away, and the soldiers do some running fingers. They ran away. The women went to the tomb with spices to put on the body of Jesus. The stone rolled away, and the women ran, do, do running fingers, back to tell other people that the stone had rolled away. Do like this. We have some news to tell you. The stone has rolled away. Yeah, uh -huh, we're sure. We saw it. The angels came to sit in the tomb. The angels. The Bible tells us they're bigger and stronger than we are, so they would sit like, hmm, in the tomb. That stone had rolled away, so the angels just walked in, like big strong angels, sat in there. Are you wondering how God had that stone roll away? An angel did it. One of the angels was his assignment from God. Go roll that stone away. And the angel said, I will. And he rolled that great big stone away. The disciples ran to the tomb. Well, let's do some running arms for them. 
they ran as fast as they could. And they saw, use your seeing eyes, they saw that the stone was rolled away, right? So, the soldiers, the women, the disciples, saw that the body of Jesus was not in the tomb. Where was Jesus? Jesus was visiting people. The Bible says that Jesus visited with Mary. She was one of the women who loved Jesus. Oh, she'd been so sad to see him die. But she saw that the body was gone, was not in the tomb. She didn't know what to do. Jesus knew what to do. Jesus visited that woman, Mary. He talked to her. So then Mary realized that Jesus was not in the tomb because he was alive. And she knew that Jesus would continue saving people. The Bible says that Jesus visited Peter. Peter was one of the disciples of Jesus who loved Jesus so much, wanted to please him. But when Jesus was arrested, Peter was afraid. So he pretended he didn't even know Jesus. And then, after he'd done that, Peter was so ashamed. Peter didn't know what to do. Jesus knew what to do. Jesus visited Peter and talked with him. And then Peter realized that he was forgiven. Jesus had forgiven him. And that Jesus would continue to save people. The Bible says that Jesus visited two men walking home from Jerusalem. That was the area where Jesus had been crucified. They were walking home from there to the town that they lived in, which was called Emmaus. The two men were so sad and really confused because they had seen Jesus crucified. They thought that now he would not save anyone, that they would not be saved, that he was not the saving man there anymore. The men didn't know what to do. Jesus knew what to do. Jesus visited those two men. He talked with them and he explained to them about the Old Testament scriptures that said, that the Messiah, that means the saving man, called the Christ, had to die and raise back to life again. Then the men realized that it was Jesus talking to them, the Messiah, the saving man. And they realized he would continue saving people. The Bible says that Jesus visited a big group of disciples in a room where they were hiding. The disciples were afraid that the soldiers would come and arrest them, like Jesus had been arrested. The disciples were sad and confused and afraid. They didn't know what to do because they were alone without Jesus to lead them and to instruct them. Jesus knew what to do. Jesus visited those disciples. He showed them the scars on his hands and his feet, where the soldiers had nailed him to the cross. The disciples realized it was Jesus, and they knew he was alive. And then Jesus gave them a new job assignment. Ah, Jesus reminded them that God the Father had sent him to tell them the good news about how to be saved. Now, Jesus said he was sending them to tell everybody the good news that they had learned from Jesus. The disciples knew what to do with all the rest of their lives. The death of Jesus was horrible, but it was part of the good news, the gospel, and that is wonderful. So what happened when the stone rolled away? 
people started to believe the gospel. People started to understand God's plan for everyone. There's a verse in the Bible, two verses together, in the part of the New Testament that is called 1 Corinthians, and it's in chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. And this is what it tells us. Christ, remember that's Jesus, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the scriptures. And he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What does that verse mean? It means that the Old Testament scriptures told everyone that God was sending a saving man, a Messiah, the Christ, to die and be buried and to rise again back to life three days later. Why is that verse in the Bible for us to read? It's for anyone who reads. It's for people who are confused or sad or afraid. For people who need to be forgiven, who need to have eternal life. For people who don't know what to do. We read that verse, those verses, and all of the scriptures because Jesus knows what to do.